Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here with another episode of Kerbal Space Program 1.2 for Absolute Beginners. In this episode, we will be talking about docking and rendezvous. So, if you are the type of person that says, Saka, I've gotten the orbit down, I've gotten out to the out to Minmus, maybe even the moon, but I want to build a space station. How would I get many parts together around the planet to make one big ship? And that is what we are going to cover today. I already have one flight in orbit from the Dynawing. Let's go ahead and take a look at it because there's something that I want to show you. When you want to dock your spacecraft, it is important to have one key element, and on the Dyna Wing, it is right here up front. And if you right click on it, that is the Clampatron shielded docking port. You want to make sure that you have a spacecraft with a docking port, and the ship that is coming up to meet you has a docking port. Obviously, when you make a space station, uh, you're going to have many parts coming off of this, so you want just as many docking ports connected to it. So because this Dynawing only has one docking port, I can bring up a ship to connect to it, but as far as this is concerned, this is the only docking place that it possibly can be. So I could turn this into a space station of sorts, but the next part I bring up would have to not only have the docking port to connect to this ship, but other docking ports as well to meet up with. But this Dynawing is in an orbit here, a pretty circular orbit of 89,900 by 90,100, so only a 200 meter uh, difference in its apoapsis and periapsis, which if you remember the speed relative to these, it maintains a relative constant speed because it is in an almost circular orbit. The challenge today will be to launch something from the Kerbal Space Center right here and meet up with this guy and synchronize their orbits together and then move in close. So for this part of the exercise, what I'm going to do is launch another Dyna Wing. So I will go out to the Space Center. I will go to the launch pad here. Once it loads, I'll go out to the launch pad. I will load up the Dyna Wing, which is already here. Maella is going to be the pilot, which is fine, and we are going to launch. The process is the same for any ship that you want to, to launch, but just make sure that they have the docking clamps. The next thing we would like to do is wait for this particular ship to sort of fly overhead. Otherwise, we're going to have to wait several orbits to catch it because this Dynawing will maintain its constant speed. If we launch now and get into the exact same orbit, we will always be across the planet from one another. So while we are on the launch pad, we can time accelerate um, up to say a thousand times, a hundred times, and it's going to come around. And we wanna wait until it is almost overhead because we're going to be speeding up, we're going to be launching through the atmosphere, we're going to be much slower than this guy. So let's go ahead and launch. SAS on. We want to go full throttle. Space bar to fire these two engines and then once we press space bar again, the clamps will unlock and we will get these solid rocket boosters pushing us along. Let's go! Now the Dynawing is almost space shuttle in nature. Uh, we want to keep the dorsal section of the rocket pointed almost to the surface. And this engine here makes the space shuttle work. It is a very wide gimbaling engine. Whenever I move, you can see the thrust vector change really, really quickly, uh, forward and back. That allows the, uh, the thrust to be positioned evenly. If the rocket engines were straight and didn't move, the center of mass would be pushing the rocket over and we would certainly nose it to the ground. So this uh, extreme gimbling engine here, the vector, is what is allowing the space shuttle to fly. Now I'm not worried about the aerodynamic effects. We want to get through this thick part of the atmosphere really quickly, especially since we have the solid rocket boosters helping us. Let's pitch over almost to the 45 and let's not dip any lower than that. 
Solid rocket boosters are about ready to go, so there they go. The ship automatically has those um, the engines to push the solid rocket boosters away. And what's unique about this ship is this is the fuel for this spacecraft. It's being pumped in uh, by fuel lines. So once this tank runs out, we will be using RCS fuel to power these tiny guys. So we have to make sure that we are doing the work with our main engines as long as possible. We're at 23,000, let's check our map. You can see right there, it flew by, but hopefully we can catch up to it. Standard orbital procedure here, just picking up speed. We want to increase our altitude just a bit, and it's, it's having some difficulty because we're, we're fighting this air resistance, which is fine. We want to get most of our speed built up with this section because those RCS engines back here do not provide a whole lot of thrust, so we need to get the majority of the work done while we can. So we're almost to 80. Let's go ahead and cut it at 87. And you can see there we're a little low, so that means an inclination change that we are going to have to make. Oh, our focus was on Kerbin. I double clicked. Uh, Kerbin and change the focus, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and pull out our maneuver node, get the apoaps and periaps side by side, as you see there, and we will wait. It should be a 34 second burn. Hopefully we have enough fuel to do that. If not, like I said, the majority of our boosting will be done um, with, this, with these rockets and then fine tuning with the little guys. Once we are on the maneuver node, we will increase time acceleration up until 70, where we can actually use the good time acceleration and get up to our burn time. About 18 seconds, 17 seconds will be our, um, our sweet spot here, where we go full throttle. Just waiting for that, 20, 19, 18, 17, full burn, and Milo will try to hold that maneuver as best she can. The rocket is kind of wobbling just a bit. Um, since we're here, we can go ahead and just focus on prograde, since essentially that's all this maneuver node was, was a prograde maneuver. Our liquid fuel is about to burn out almost on cue, which is pretty, really good. We don't have a whole lot of burning to do with those little engines. Pretty good stuff. Now we'll use the RCS thrusters to, uh, to help us out. Now, one thing that you notice that happened there is the rocket started pitching over. That is because the center of mass is lower than these rocket engines, so it's almost as if these engines are pushing um, the back of the spacecraft up and pushing the nose down. What we can do is this ship actually has RCS thrusters, so you can hit the R key and Maella will go ahead and use these thrusters to stable out. We'll get rid of our maneuver node and just turn prograde to finish off the burn. And then we will very slowly accelerate to get our um, apoapsis high enough here. Let's add a maneuver. Oh, the apoaps and periaps flipped very quickly. It doesn't take a whole lot of speed to finish off this burn, which is good. We don't have a whole lot of speed to uh, mess with. Let's go ahead and time accelerate here. With RCS on, she can pretty much hold the, uh, the attitude, but you don't want to go full throttle with these engines because it does play havoc with the rocket stability. You can sort of see how the RCS thrusters, especially this one, is trying to keep the back of the ship up from those, uh, from those engines here. Our periapsis is climbing, and we are essentially right on our apoapsis, so we're getting the most out of it for sure. We're above 70, so we're not going to come crashing back down to the surface, and we want to get um, about, you know, 91 and 90. And there we go. We have a circular orbit. Now to save battery, we'll turn off RCS and SAS, um, we have 452 electric charge and no solar panels on this thing, so we don't have anything to really recharge the batteries. We don't have anything to help this rocket turn once those are dead. 
We can right click on our docking port and open the shield to be ready for docking. And now it is the, um, the arduous task of docking. Let's see. We want to set this other Dyna Wing as target. And what I will do is I will rename the ship that we're currently in to make things a little bit better for us. You can right click on the hatch and then we can click on rename vessel and we will call this uh, approach because this is the uh, spacecraft that we are going to be approaching with. So that's going to clean up uh, the, the difference here. Just as planets, we now have these diamonds, which show our, um, our intersection. Now, we are going to be the top, and they are going to be the bottom, our target. And if we hover over the first one, we can see that the separation is 199,000 kilometers. Like, it's, it, it's pretty high up there between here and here. If we look on the back side of the planet, we can see that we are also at 205, so we are actually losing time to this guy. Because we want to make this as seamless as possible, we also need to change this 1.4 degree ascending node uh, as soon as we can to, make, to level this out exactly like you would a planet. So we want to move down. The ascending, oops, the ascending node will drop, and now we will be at zero with just a 53.9 meter a second burn. Since we know that this is going to be a, an ascending node, we want to go down to the descending node, or the anti-normal. Maella will flip the spacecraft. We can use RCS to help her maneuver better. And then once we get set on that node, we will just uh, turn off SAS and go time acceleration. There goes our debris. Now a 30 second burn um, is if we were at full power. Of course we're not going to be because of the uh, offset balance of the rocket. So we'll try burning now. She'll try to hold her vector. We essentially want to get this as close to zero as possible. It don't need to be right on the money, but you know, the closer we are, it definitely helps. Let's go anti-normal because that's where we want to be. Another 20 meters a second. Our monopropellant is half gone. And really, we don't need much um, remaining to complete the docking maneuver. Everything will be done nice and slow. Let's see how that worked here. There we go, point one. So we are on plane, and as you can see, our orbits are very, very close. 200,000 and then um, 177, so we're actually catching up. Now, if you wanted to be efficient, you know that your first in intersection is 200, your second is 177. Each lap that you make will essentially uh, decrease the approach. So we're at 177 there. Okay, 184 there. So what do we need to do? We can't catch this guy. And you would think, just like the uh, Apollo astronauts did, well, let's burn towards it. Let's speed up and catch up. Well, the theory of orbital mechanics kicks into play. Remember, if we accelerate here, we are raising our apoaps over here. So what's going to happen is this Dyna wing will stay close to the planet at its current speed. But as we increase our altitude, we will slow down, allowing this thing to move away from us. Ideally, because we're moving away, what we actually want to do is burn away from it and then drop our apoapsis down to, say, 75 or so. That way, each lap that we make, we are actually faster at about a quarter of our orbit. So let's go ahead and do that. We will load up the rocket. We will turn retrograde, turn on our RCS, go retrograde. Maello will turn, and then we will just lightly accelerate and watch our apoapsis drop. Also, you can see the maneuver nodes here dropping as well. Because we are changing our orbit, therefore we are changing our anticipated orbit time. And you can see there, as we are dropping our orbit, the intersection time is going down. 
We want to keep going, keep going. We will wait another, you know, we'll, we'll wait a minute. We're actually at our periap, so this is not ideal. Um, so, let us wait until our apoapsis. We'll just warp there. Our separation is 169,000 meters now. So we are catching up just a little bit. And this is how it's actually done, nice and slow, multiple orbits with very little uh, thrust change. You don't want to come shooting straight at it at thousands of meters a second uh, because, you know, the, uh, the approach would be much too quick. And remember, you have to slow down and match this guy's speed. So if you go haul in the mail at a certain speed, um, it's going to be very tough for you to slow down. So let's drop this to 75 or so. We don't want to drop back into the atmosphere. All right, now, because we can't go any lower over here, what we can do is sort of increase our orbit on the other side to change the speed. So we'll actually um, warp to this maneuver. Let's close this guy out. We will warp here to our periapsis. Right now, our separation is only 95,000 kilometers, so we are catching. And if we were patient people, we could wait until the next orbit and see how that would change. But what we would like to do is line up these triangles point over point. All right, so we're here. Let's go ahead and face prograde because we want to raise up our apoapsis a bit. And now we're getting these target markers again. And as we accelerate, our markers are sort of separating here. Let's hold fast. Let us 99.7, 106. Let's warp to the other side here. Nice and slow. We don't want to, uh, we don't want to speed this up too much. We are catching it because we're lower on one side. Matter of fact, what we could do then is we could drop, oh, there we go, 140, now 145 separation. It looked closer, but it's not. All right, we'll drop the whole orbit then. We'll go to our periapsis, and we will drop this one down a bit until we can catch up. Separation at 46,000. All right, so we are indeed catching it with this little um, drop here from this ascending node to this descending node, we're catching it each and every orbit. So what we can do is go ahead and warp to the other side. We're just approaching it nice and slow. And eventually we will see these arrows get right on top of one another or close enough that we can do something with it. So these orange markers will disappear. They will pass through this orange marker, and here it's fairly close, and you see that we've actually passed it. So now what we can do is adjust our orbit some more and uh, see if we can get these things lined up. So we want to make our move on the opposite side here, add a maneuver, and then we let us try speeding up. Let's see what happens. If we speed up, our separation is 14.5. We're getting nice and close. Let's keep going. If we speed up again, we are at 11.7. Speed up again, 8.8. .8. Excellent. 5.2. 2.4. 0. 0.6, perfect. So we need a 27 meter a second burn in 11 minutes. We can do that. Let's go ahead and tell Myela to get to the maneuver node. She will pivot, get on the maneuver, and then we will time accelerate to our point. And a 14 second burn shouldn't be too much at all. Five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. All right, let's slow it down. Let Myla get on the ball. And at seven seconds, we want to burn. Here we go, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Go, Myla, go. She's trying to keep it right on the ball. 
we definitely want maneuver here because we're uh, we plan that way and we're not on um, a prograde or a retrograde marker. All right, let's cut it and see what we've done. Once we get rid of the maneuver node, indeed, right here we have 0.3 separation and now we have a target mode. Now this is the difference in speed between us and what we are trying to catch, the dino wing. So essentially what we want to do is we want to grow uh, retrograde or prograde depending when we get close. So let us warp to about right here and we're going to start to see them come together just like that. And as you can see, we've, we've dropped target speed and that's good. Essentially when we meet it at our closest point, we want to be moving at zero and the dino wing is actually right over there. Let's go SAS and then we want to go uh, retrograde because since we're in target mode our retrograde means slowing down compared to this guy and it looks like he's about to pass us so let's go we are thrusting we can see it trying to pull alongside we want this target speed to be absolutely zero so we're slowing down, we're slowing down, we're slowing down, and once this hits zero, we will be parked essentially right next to it, and then we can use minor adjustments to get there. Here we go, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, cut it. So now we have a 638 meter gap between us and our target, which is good. What I'd like to do is use the bracket keys next to the enter key and take control of this spacecraft. We can see right here the approach and we can see right here the dyna wing and the bracket keys next to your P key will change between ships if they are within range. What I want to do is point it point this ship right at the dyna wing, nose to nose, which that is this pink marker here. So once we do that, we'll point it, we'll time accelerate a little bit, and this ship will essentially be locked in this orientation, be facing nose to nose, just like that. And now we will go to the other ship. We will set this as our target. Now we're in target mode, and now we want to move towards it by pointing here and then just using our RCS thrusters we can use the uh, H key to move forward essentially killing off that speed you can still use WASD to position but H key is moving forward with the RCS thrusters which is what we want to do essentially what we want to see is this prograde marker enter the pink circle once you have some speed, then you can use the I, K, J, and L key to position it. So this is K and L, and I'm almost pushing this um, like I'm flying. So right there, we are now moving directly towards our target at 0.4 meters a second. Now because we are a little bit lower, we have to sort of compensate for it. So picking up some speed towards our target would not be a bad idea. Since we actually have some, um, some thrust authority, let me use stability control. And let's burn with our other engines here. Very, very lightly. And once we get up to about five meters a second or so, we'll cut the engines and then we will position the prograde marker using only, in RCS mode, the I, J, K, and L keys. So there we go, I'm only using the K key to push this vector up, and there we go. Now, if we were to position ourselves solely on the marker here, we will be moving nose first to the ship. So let's time accelerate here. We can see approach is coming in for us. Once we get closer, of course, we have to slow down. We're moving forward at 3.7 meters a second. Essentially, we are lined up. 
Let's tweak it a little bit. Let's go back to our RCS and use the I key to push that vector back down. And then we will point the actual spaceship down. And now we will slow down using the N key. You can see those thrusters firing out the nose. We're slowing down at three meters a second, 2.9, 2.7, using the D key to pivot the spacecraft around once more. So two meters a second is fine. Now I will use the J key to move the prograde marker to the left and the I key to push that prograde marker down. And then I will actually point the nose with WASD. And we are lined up, essentially. Let's kill our rotation a bit. And we are coming in. Essentially, gravity will do the work. That is why I pointed the nose of this craft directly at, so we can have a nose-to-nose -nose encounter. Slowly and surely, let's adjust once more using the K key. Push that prograde marker up and the J key to center it. And then use WASD to uh, complete the trifecta of the pink circle, the prograde marker, and the flying V, where we are dead center. So here we go, we're coming in, and the docking clamps are magnetic, so once we get within range, it's automatically going to pull them together, and if we've made a good dock, we don't need to do anything. Oh, we passed by it. All right, N key to back up, we essentially push this guy out of whack, and this is good because now what do you do? You've missed. So we will time accelerate just for a moment. The ships will sort of dance upon one another. Let's turn back around and get the nose facing the other guy. Matter of fact, what we can do is we can just uh, accelerate just a little bit with our RCS thrusters to get away from it. Just H key. It'll pivot around and then we want to get the nose facing our target marker once more and then we can reorientate this guy. That's the benefit of having a second pilot in this craft. Here we go. Just going around like that. And then we will time accelerate, switch to our other spacecraft, select this. Okay, it already is selected as a target. We'll pivot it around. We'll use the RCS thrusters to help us out. Like that. It's a little unwieldy. But now we can move forward with the H key. We're starting to slow down. We want to be moving forward right on this pink marker to, uh, to help get ourselves moving in the right direction. Essentially, this uh, prograde marker will start to come back around. And then once you can get a good view of it, use your J, K, L, and I keys to position this thing right in the center of the marker. And then once that is complete, use your WASD keys with just, uh, with just the control node. You don't need your RCS thrusters to place it right on the center. SAS was on, that was actually hurting me. All right, SAS on there, RCS, use the L key to maneuver it back into place. And we are lined up once more. Looks like it's kind of at a funny angle, but we're only moving 0.6 meters a second. All right, we need to turn a little bit more, a little bit more. There we go, they're starting to talk to one another. You can use your WASD keys there to sort of, ah, we pushed it, we pushed it away. N key to move back. This is a terrible tutorial, but a good exercise for lining things up. All right, let's kill our orbital velocity here. Let's just use the H key. Three, two, one. There we go. Turn off RCS, point back toward the target. Since we're right here, it won't take a whole lot of maneuvering to get it settled. Time accelerate, swap to the other spacecraft, and then we will rotate towards it once more. Yeah. And it's closing in quickly. I need to make this quick. There we go. 
Nah, we just went by it. Keep your marker right on the pink. And now if we move forward and then use our, our, our RCS thrusters here to line it up. Oh, it's not. I don't think it's aligned to the darken clamp. That was the problem. That was indeed the problem. All right. 32 minutes into the tutorial, we learned something new. That was a rookie mistake. Make sure that it is your docking clamp that is your target, not your cockpit of your other craft. Okay, we can fix this. We got this now. Let's use the end key to back up just a touch. We'll use the uh, RCS thrusters to uh, counter that. We want to be moving directly away from the target, which we are now. RCS thrusters off. Let's point back at the pink. Point back at the pink. And then we will switch spacecraft. Right click the docking port set as target. And now we will flip around to the Dyna Wing. Control from here. So essentially what I told it to is to look from the point of view of the uh, docking clamp and not the, con uh, the controls of the ship. All right, let's thrust forward. Thrusting forward and then using the L key to center it. RCS and stability off. Let's line it up. Keeping it as dead center as we possibly can. We're moving at 0.2 meters a second, and I think this one should be good. Here we go. And with the power of magnetism, there it goes. You can see the ship moving. You want to make sure your SAS and uh, RCS is off so it can get a good dock and just let it sit. The rockets will start, you know, maneuvering to one another. They'll start talking and bam, we are now docked nose to nose and you can actually uh, pump fuel from one to the other. You can treat this as one spacecraft. You can even right click, transfer crew, Myella Kerman, and then transfer her to that capsule there. But the, the part is full, but you can actually transfer Kerbals uh, between ships you can transfer fuel. Let's go into our uh, RCS thrusters. Let's see, that cargo bay is locked, so we can't open it up. But what we can do is we can, um, if you have two parts together, which this is a terrible example because I don't have two exposed fuel tanks, but I know. Cancel that, please. There we go. Say we want to transfer fuel, so we have monopropellant in here and we have monopropellant back here. How do I fill it up? Well, you right click uh, on the part using Alt and then right click on another part using Alt and you can say uh, go out. We can try to make these as even as possible. So 66 and 69, that'll work for, for me there. You can nitpick because uh, these are all individual tanks so one to one two to two three to three and four to four uh, and that is essentially how you dock so the big thing to remember is make sure you remember to set the actual docking clamp as a target before you start maneuvering but yeah take it nice and easy nice and slow remember your triangles and hopefully this will help you uh, make a space station in the future Perhaps once we start our career mode and we learn more about docking, we will see docking again. Or perhaps we might start work on our own space station in which you can see um, the docking process more clearly. And while we're here, let's warp around here and uh, see the sun so we can see our two spacecrafts docked together beautifully. And wow, this is a big plan. There we go. So there is our space shuttles. Um, they are linked together, so if you hit the RCS key and wanted to turn it, all the RCS thrusters from both ships will be uh, utilized. So this is essentially one spacecraft until you right-click and 
on the other docking clamp him right click on the other docking clamp yeah and undock once you do that the two ships will function once more as two separate entities but that is docking ladies and gentlemen sorry that was a little bit sloppy um, with the part selection but you can see docking is not easy and it takes several times but do not panic do not um, thrust away very quickly just keep your wits about you and let the magnets do the work so that is going to do it for me in this episode ladies and gentlemen like share and subscribe if you are so bold and for the next video I'm thinking maybe a uh, comm satellite around the poles maybe some uh, interplanetary travel between here and Duna or here and Eve and uh, who knows maybe a space station but that's going to do it for me like share and subscribe if you are so bold and I will see you in the next Kerbal Space Program tutorial video take care